Good evening everybody, Mike Naso here from IPR365.com with the latest video update on the tropics. And as we head towards the latter half of August, things will get more active. As you know, we've uh, had quite a few named storms now, but no hurricanes. Of course, Arlene back in June held the potential to become a hurricane, but it ran out of room. Cindy was moving to the northeast too fast to wrap up an aisle, though it did look like it tried. Don fizzled, Emily was forecast to become a hurricane and never did, and Tropical Storm Gert tried to get spinning in inner core, but it just wasn't able to do it. So what are the candidates out there now for our first hurricane of the 2011 hurricane season? Because it will come. Well, we have Invest 93L sitting here in the Southwest Caribbean, and we've been watching this since it was in the Central Atlantic. It moved through the Lesser Antilles, and then it moved south of Hispaniola. The Air Force was out there, could not find a closed low-level surface center, and they were headed out there today but had mechanical difficulties, and it's looking a bit better organized and there has some potential that before it makes landfall somewhere here in Central America or potentially believes that it could achieve uh, tropical storm status but if it does is likely to be very quick very tiny and thankfully not a slow moving large rainmaker like we often see in this area the second system here is a 97L, a new invest, and the model guidance is showing this becoming a significant hurricane uh, even down the road for the United States in the next 8 to 10 days. Uh, the state of Florida in particular uh, is uh, under the gun from this thing based on the model guidance, which I'll show you. We'll look to see if that's legit or not. Right now it does not look that good, at least not to me. And there is a heck of a lot of dry, stable air to the north, and the system looks rather puny at this point. In contrast, we have Invest 98L just recently designated off Africa. This could become a storm before either of the other two. Now, this is a lot to try and grasp, so let's try and get down to it and see exactly what we have out there. Well, Invest 93L is our feature closest to land and closest to tropical storm strength, at least at this point. And uh, the model guidance moves it very quickly in towards Central America, northern coast of Honduras, maybe Belize. The best opportunity at development would be if it somehow skirts Honduras and moves more towards the Yucatan Peninsula, then quick development into a tropical storm or even a minimal hurricane with something this tiny over those hot waters couldn't be ruled out, but in all likelihood it's going to sail west in the next, say, 10 to 20 hours into the coast of Honduras and not be able to come back, but we're going to watch that very carefully, of course. You can see the uh, h -Worf model does show this system getting up there to a moderate tropical storm and moving right along the north coast of Honduras into Belize. Indeed, the GFDL is a bit weaker with it, still makes it a tropical storm, but note how it initializes it way too far north and pulls the system up here over, over uh, areas of uh, Mexico and the Yucatan uh, way too far to the north for the current motion that it is traveling. And that's got to be uh, concerning for those in the Yucatan, but nonetheless, I wouldn't put much stock into it. You can see the system is looking a bit better organized as the sun goes down, and if there is a low-level center, tropical storm strength can be achieved. Uh, it was looking more down here earlier moving west, but it has seemed to gain ever so slightly in latitude, and that makes a big difference in the long run between running into Honduras and moving over the warm Caribbean waters. So we're going to watch this. Could this be Harvey? Uh, there's a 50-50 shot, I'd say. Right now the chance for development is high uh, uh, from the National Hurricane Center. Then we move further out, and this is what we're dealing with. We're dealing with uh, 97L. Now, the model guidance, some initialize it too far south, too far east, too far north, but in general, a motion towards the west-northwest, either in, through, or just north of the uh, Virgin Islands is expected, and then areas of Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, the Bahamas, and Florida would be most at risk. Now, here is the obvious problem. Look at the ensemble members of the GFS. If the GFS track verified then we would be talking about a potentially devastating hurricane. You're talking north of Puerto Rico, north of Hispaniola, over those warm waters towards the Florida Keys. This thing would be able to intensify very, very quickly over those hot waters, especially if upper-level winds looked favorable, which in late August in this area, it would seem to be the case based on the models. But look at where these ensembles are. This thing could end up in the Bay of Campeche, 
aiming at New Orleans, southwest Florida, Tampa Bay, turning north out to sea. There is a huge difference. Some of the models don't even initialize it further than 55 west. So you're saying this triangulation of mishap here with this system, it could be anywhere from way down here dissipating to the Bay of Campeche to out to sea. And so you have this large area of uncertainty with this system, but what is certain is likely the next three to four days, which is gradually in this area towards the west-northwest. Whether or not that impacts the islands or moves north remains to be seen, but I will tell you this much. The system ain't going to do nothing anytime soon. Here's why. When we look at the system on the, uh, say, the storm floater loop, you can tell that it's very dry, very ill-defined, and you see a lot of this stable error. See these here, these clouds? This is a very skeleton-type wave, and this is similar to what we saw with the system that became Emily. So it, unless this thing really starts to get its act together, I can't see it becoming anything significant, at least not in the short term. Uh, you can see it from the longer view. There is definitely something there. This is a large mass, and pretty much anywhere out of this can come the system, although it would probably be somewhere in here. If this is the case, this thing's going to move a lot further south, and if it gets caught up over Hispaniola, it's going to be a heck of a lot weaker. I could tell you that much. It's going to be a heck of a lot weaker than what the models show. Now, the long-range GFS has been very eerily consistent in making this system a significant hurricane. You can see this was the Zero Z, which took it right up the spine of western Florida into the Tampa region. Look at the difference between the Zero Z and the 12 Z. Almost identical. Almost identical. And that would be a very large and powerful hurricane. Now you're looking, you're saying, well, 90 knots is powerful, 977 millibar. At the extended range, this could be a Category 4 for all we know. You can't go by the resolution that far out. But what we can see is, obviously, it's a hurricane of significant magnitude slamming into the state of Florida. Of course, it does go through Puerto Rico, Scrape, Hispaniola, and Cuba, which would likely inhibit intensification. But remember Hurricane George. It was 75 miles an hour north of Cuba, got to 105 by the Keys. Anything's possible. But uh, if it moved north of the uh, Greater Antilles, then steady to rapid strengthening until landfall would occur, and we'd be dealing with a much, much more serious hurricane than even that GFS model shows. Also, the European, look at it in the long range, brings it into the Gulf of Mexico. Now, this is 240 hours out, so 10 days. Take this with a huge grain of salt. But this would be a very significant major hurricane, and the pattern would be there to basically pull this system straight through the Caribbean, right up into the Gulf of Mexico, and from there, the odds would favor some type of motion, it looks like, towards the northwest, which would be very, very concerning indeed for that region and we're going to have to keep an eye on it for that very purpose uh, because if it does become something significant uh, the United States particularly the state of Florida could be in for some serious trouble with this thing so we're gonna watch it carefully and we have Invest 98L just designated off Africa and this looks better than any of them especially 97L you can see it does appear to have curvature convection with it a very very vigorous robust tropical wave and here's the model guidance and you can see it starts at moving northwest pretty quick going over the Cape Verde Islands but note what happens in the longer run all these models indicate some bend west or west southwest and that's because the ridging is expected to be very very significant the model guidance have indicated some very high pressures up here that would pretty much push anything back west even if it got as far north as 21 way out here at 40 west However, uh, if it does remain on more of a westerly track, then we'd probably be dealing with something more like that. Way too early to speculate whether this would ever get towards land masses further west. It just moved off Africa, for goodness sake. Nonetheless, it is something to keep an eye on as we see it on satellite right now. Clearly, uh, it's organizing, and I wouldn't be surprised uh, if this became Harvey and 93L didn't develop, and 97L waits till later, if at all. So this could be the biggie feature that uh, we've been waiting for and potentially develop before anything else does, which is why we're going to keep such a close eye on it. But that is definitely a uh, nasty-looking tropical wave you can see there. And I should note that all the computer models from the Canadian 
Uh, I even saw the no gaps, uh, the European, the GFS, all of them show that in the next two to three days, a wave that is going to be extremely well organized is going to exit Africa a little to the north of where this one has and uh, could become a tropical storm right off the bat. So we're going to watch that carefully. You can see wind shear over 93L is very favorable. It has an anti-cyclone, a little safe harbor here. We also have one over our ill-defined 97L. A very strong zone of shear here moving on off towards the uh, northeast in front of our uh, approaching 97L. This should carry a more favorable environment along with it as it moves west. But as of right now, it's not showing signs of organizing under what appear to be rather favorable shear uh, tendencies. You can see again 93L has very, very low shear. It's all about timing. If this thing were uh, spinning the way it is, but instead of moving due west was moving northwest, uh, then we'd be dealing with a strengthening hurricane entering the Gulf of Mexico. That's not going to happen. Don't uh, fear if you live in the Gulf. If anything, keep an eye on the systems out near Africa as they seem to like the Gulf of Mexico in the longer run. I did want to note we have Hurricane Greg at 18.8 north, 112.6 west. Winds are 85, gusting to 105, is moving west-northwest. 980 millibars appears to have reached its peak intensity. You can see Hurricane Greg looking a uh, little tiny thing, but see some dry air getting in there. It does appear to be weakening at this hour. And in the Central Pacific, I should note, we do have uh, Fernanda, which is still a tropical storm, try to become a hurricane. It should weaken and move south of the state of Hawaii. And looking at Fernanda right now, it ain't looking all that good. As a matter of fact, it did try and become a hurricane earlier. You can still see the center on visible, so we'll see what happens. But right now, odds are it weakens and doesn't become a threat. So the main focus uh, in the next several days or even weeks uh, won't be as much on 93L. It could become Tropical Storm Harvey. I'm not ruling that out as it moves into Central America or potentially Belize. The strongest it would probably have time to become would be a Category 1 hurricane, and it would have to crank up very quickly, which small systems sometimes do, especially in August over hot waters. 97L could be a monstrous situation down the road if these models verify and the consistency with the models is very very scary and this system is completely uh, out of nowhere even the model guidance they've shown some bubbling off Africa but nothing that looks anything quite as well organized as this if it holds organization and develops it could become a significant feature before even 97L so we're gonna be watching all this very carefully and you'll want to stay tuned to IPR365.com for the latest. I'm Mike Naso from IPR. I'll see you next time.